Today, I am interviewing Keika Dasgupta. She's an incredible mom of two who is an industry leader in marketing global brands like her clients, Ike, Ike, Ikea, Nike, Disney, American Express, and many other Fortune 500s. She's also the founder of Art of Lifing, where she runs national gratitude workshops with both anti-bullying conversations and how to build happy corporate cultures. She's also a TEDx speaker, speaking on how we are practicing gratitude all wrong. Today, Keika helps people do life on their own terms, and she helps schools and businesses fight bullying and create a more meaningful, happy culture using gratitude-centered leadership. Welcome, Keika, to the Body Project Podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. And I have had the personal privilege of knowing you for over a year now, having you in one of my business mastermind advisory groups. And you are not only a powerhouse in your industry, but you are also a powerhouse at home. And so I asked you today to come on the podcast to speak about what you speak on a national level, really, about your philosophy of how we can support our kids through tough times, like bullying, and bringing in that conversation, right? Yes, but before absolutely. I want, <laughs> thank you. But before we dive into that conversation, I would love for you to briefly share about what your initiative is in schools and how you have been really a guide to teachers, educators, and parents about the conversation about the tough talks that we have with them. That's such a good point. Well, thank you. Yes, I, I'm so excited about the work I do uh, with schools and with teachers, the parent community, uh, because one of the really big things I found is um, having been in marketing and PR for 23 years, mm. you know, so often we take an, uh, an imaginary object, you know, a company as a brand doesn't have a personality. We assign it a personality. We give it core values. We, you know, we talk about what it stands for, but very often in our own lives and especially for our children, you know, we focus so much on teaching them math and English and, you know, social uh, subjects and history, which is all very important. But when it comes to them getting to really know themselves, to really have confidence in themselves, to think about how they can impact a collective, um, I feel like, you know, we, we've got kids who are often feeling quite anxious in that arena. And so my goal is to take everything that I know in terms of the power of branding. So if you think mm. about the fact that we can make people fall in love with a brand and be so passionately advocating for those brands, how do we take that and apply it to our kids so that they can have the same type of confidence, so that they can stand in their strength and they can share with other people what they have, recognizing their own superpowers. And in that place, you know, when you come from a place of confidence and strength and positivity, you're adding hot water to a cold water environment and the bullying and the anxiety and self esteem mm. issues all start to dissipate. So that's my goal is to be able to add in that positivity into our school environments and empower our students to really believe in themselves, mm. be confident and have an impact on others. I love that, Keika, and I love your initiative that you're taking into the schools and that, those conversations. But let's bring it down to the micro, right? Yes. One of the biggest challenges that I have with us being in quarantine going into four or five, six weeks, right, yes. is that in the midst of it all, I'm having a hard time navigating my own emotions, right? How, you know, about work, about us staying safe, about schooling, about the whole at-home situation. But more than that, navigating the homeschooling piece has been hard, right? How yeah. do I support my kids to get through the academic portion that we're supposed to be doing, but also recognizing that just like I'm dealing with emotions, that they are too, and how this is a really important time for them to develop their own understanding of their social emotional skills, right? Yeah. And I know that when we spoke a couple of weeks ago and I was having my breakdown, you gave me some really powerful, like step broken down advice of how you would advise people, educators, to help kids navigate this. And so I would love for you to share that perspective with, with us today. 
Sure. And well, this is something I'm so passionate about because it's not, it's the work I do with teachers and, and schools and classrooms, but it's also what I do with my own kids right. at the same time. And, you know, we are human. And so, you know, just my psychology background and the work I've done on the marketing side, I'm, I'm, my entire career has been focused on what is my audience feeling and what do mm. I need to say to my audience to connect with them? Mm. And, you know, in parenting, the same rules apply, right? How do we connect with our kids? And we are human. We have to allow ourselves that chance to say, yeah, this is not easy. So what happens for us, I think, as parents is quite often we feel like we need to be the protector of our kids, right? And that we need to show them strength and we need to make sure like if we're weak, they're going to just break down or we're not good parents if we show that we're weak. Right. So in that quest to be really strong and, and to hold it together when we're not feeling that way, our inclination can often be, we need to control our kids. We need to make sure they get everything that they need. So we get into like doing mode and we're yep. like, we're going to structure this and my kids are not going to lose anything during this pandemic. But the reality is we are in a global pandemic that in the history and memory of humankind, we haven't experienced something mm -hmm. like this. You know, in our lifetime, we've never seen something like this. Right. So it is completely okay for us as parents to not have our mindset together, to not have our crap together. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the one thing that I would ask all parents to think about is this. If we are human and it's okay for us to not have everything together, then it's really important that our kids see that from mm -hmm. us. Yeah. You know, that we don't have to hide that from them, that it is important for them to see life in challenging times, because what happens is this, we often think that what we're going to say to our kids is what they're going to intake. But we all know as parents, yes. <laughs> it does not work that way all the time, right? In fact, the majority of the time, kids are watching us. They're watching us really intently and they're, they're learning from our example. Mm -hmm. So I say to parents that this pandemic is an opportunity for us to teach our kids that for the rest of their lives, whenever they have challenges that are beyond their control, whenever they start to face something they've never experienced before, we are modeling for them right now and teaching them how they can be. And that means part of that, and the number one lesson I would say for parents is it's okay to be in the what I would call what feels ugly. It's okay yes. to feel ugly, right? So the, the idea is that we, we should be able to sit with those bad feelings and be okay with that because we're human and understand that this too shall pass. Yes. And so if we can sit with that, then we need to let our kids sit with that and acknowledge it. Now, that's not to say that we can't hold boundaries and we need to teach our kids what's acceptable and not and give them that security. But the goal is that if we see our kids misbehaving in some capacity, especially siblings, you know, they're often fighting at home. They get no break from each other. It's really important for us to sit down and have some conversations with them and say, how are you feeling right now? Because you know what? I'm feeling pretty crappy or I was feeling really good yesterday and I had a very productive day, but today I had a hard time getting into bed. And to share that with the kids because then mm. they can see us and go, oh, but mom and dad are still okay. Like, even though mom says she's feeling crappy, I still had breakfast today. Like, the world is not falling apart in front mm. of me. And if mom's okay to talk about that, then I'll be okay. And like to encourage kids to be able to talk about what they're feeling, you know? Um, and I right. think there's three things within that message that we need to make sure we communicate to kids. I think it's like just number one for them to know that they are not alone right? We're in this together. So we might be in isolation here right now at the moment, but we are doing this for the greater good. We are all fighting this together. And, you know, for parents to say, I'm with you, honey, I know that this feels crappy. It's okay for you to sit here and feel it and not have to run away with it. You can admire the fact that you're human and you feel that, but you're not alone. I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, I would say to, to kids is that this is going to pass. It's not forever. And even though we don't know exactly how long it's going to last, and even though that makes us feel uncomfortable because we can't control it and we can't plan, I'm here with you. You're here with me. We know this will pass. So be forever. So we'll ride it out and let's make the best of what we have. Mm -hmm. And number three, I think that, you know, this is a human trait that we all have is that we all want to feel like we're being listened to mm. and that we matter. Yes. And, you know, often for our kids from the time that they're really, really young, 
they they have a voice and they want to express themselves and they want to know that they matter. And sometimes we, you know, in our, we're like, you're just a kid, you know, what do you know? Yes, I remember yes. when, when I was a child, at one point I said to my parents, uh, when I was 10 years old, I was like, in my whole life, I've never experienced something like this. And my parents were killing themselves laughing right in front of me. They're like, oh your whole life, <laughs> your whole 10 years. And I, I was kind of really hurt in the moment. They didn't mm. mean it that way. But I was like, but that is my life. Yes. <laughs> that is for me what I know. And so whether it's your three-year-old or your six-year-old or your 15-year-old, you know, we want them to know that we're listening yes. and that their voice matters. So if we can start with those things right away, I think that's a really critical piece. Yeah. Um, I yeah. love that. I love that those are really tangible things that we need to r remind ourselves and ask the question. But I just want to go back to your first point for a second, because I want to make sure that everyone heard this, the way that we manage ourselves through this and not that we have to be superheroes, yes. but show that our kid, show our kids that, yeah, we're going through something also will give them the tools so that when they encounter something similar or an uncertain time or times of stress or discourse like this is, that they will gain the tools from watching us yes, do it the way that we do it. So I yeah. think that is so powerful because you're right. I mean, I'm that parent. I tell my kids how they should act or be. And sometimes I don't sit in what is for myself and I'll allow that to actually be the leading by example, right? The living yes. by yes. example, right? And you know, the reality is that for many of us in our culture, mm. uh, just in our general societal culture, we, we uh, strive for happy. Mm. And then when we're feeling bad or crappy, <laughs> yeah. we, we try to run away from those feelings. Like this is not a good place. I don't want to be here. I want to go right to happy. You know, it's called false positivity. Right. And, and the idea is that that as human beings, we can be happy and be sad at the same time. They're not opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay. And, uh, you know, so the goal is to be able to embrace how we're feeling with love inside, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm having a hard time today. Maybe I haven't even showered. Maybe I'm still in my pajamas. That's okay. And, and to be able to approach those feelings, not with fear, but with love, because quite often we're fearful of those feelings. I don't want to feel that. And I'm just going to run, run away. Yeah, hundred percent. So our kids then do that too, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And actually, you know, Dr. Jillian Mandich, I interviewed her a couple weeks ago yeah. on exactly this. She's Canada's yeah. happiness doctor, and yeah. she said that also that we need to be, be very patient with ourselves and bring in that self compassion because this is an uncertain time, an unprecedented time that no one has ever experienced, and no one knows how to navigate this, right? Yeah. And like you said, to bring in that self compassion and that this is okay. However, you're managing it today is fine, right? Yes. Um, yes. And kind of sit in that. I think that's powerful advice. So thank you for that. Yes. I know that in your corporate programs, you speak about building a happy corporate, corporate culture yes. and that morale and looking at what motivates people is an intricate working of how happiness yes. works in the workplace, right? Yes. And you yes. spoke the other day with me about how parents need to look at how do we actually motivate our kids like in yes. the corporate world, right? Yes. And almost yes. getting an understanding of what gets our kids excited, kind of like akin to what we spoke about, Gary Chapman's book of the four love languages, right? Yes, so absolutely. I would love for you to kind of share that story that you shared with me and about how we can kind of maybe perk our ears up to what actually motivates our kids and can get the mo needle moving forward for them. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that I think um, we need to be cognizant of, and, and I'm totally guilty of this, I have two boys who are 13 mm. and nine. And when I had my second boy, I'm like, oh, he's going to be just like my first. <laughs> you know, he's course. going to do the same things, of course. And they are so different and they're motivated entirely differently, the two of mm. them. So, you know, my older one is very strategic and he will think two or three or four steps ahead and he'll decide if I want to do this, then what do I need to do? You know, I keep joking with him. I'm like, you're going to outsmart me and I have to like really be <laughs> ready. <laughs> um, and so for him, his, in, his intrinsic motivation comes from the things that he loves, but he, he likes to see the plan. He likes to mm. see the, the long game. Uh, my little one, in contrast, he lives in the moment. And you know, you can ask him to rush, 
but he will do things on his own time. <laughs> and so they're very different that way. So whether it's birth order or personality, you know, there's all kinds of things. So we have to make sure as parents, especially if we have more than one child, to remember that they're such individual, unique personalities that what will work for one child may not work for another. Mm -hmm. So the same way that when we're a manager in the corporate world, you know, the first leadership program that I ever took, they, they asked, what is the best way that you can be a leader and manage somebody? Um, and most of us were like, well, we bring our strengths to the table. We do all of this. And then their answer was, no, you need to look at what your employee needs. And then you give them what they need in their way. And parenting is the same thing, right? So, you know, if your kids, we have the, the there's the love languages we talked about the other yes. day, and I found it really insightful with my husband and I did that together because we've been married for 23 years. And I was like, so when he does the dishes and he does the laundry for me, that is his act of love. Whereas yes. I'm like, can you just come sit down and hold my hand and watch this movie with me? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. You know, so when that dynamic, when we have that kind of understanding for ourselves as couples, Imagine if we can think about what our kids' love languages are, you know? Mm. So are they expressive and touchy and feely and they want the cuddles? Do they want um, motivations in terms of other rewards? Do they need uh, feedback in terms of praise? So thinking about what your kids need, you can, you can help increase their intrinsic motivation in this time, right? So being really aware of this. Mm. But beyond what we can do, this is, I think, this pandemic and where we are here, you know, um, in Canada, this is an opportunity for us to really think about how we can teach our kids to empower themselves. Mm. So one of the things I talk about here is that, you know, we are learning how to steer our own mindset, but this might be the chance for us to help our kids steer their own mindset. So, you know, when my kids have come to me, for example, and said, oh my God, I'm so bored. <laughs> you know, my older son is so passionate about baseball. His plan is to be an MLB player. He just lives and breathes baseball and he cannot be on the diamond right now. Like if we see their tournaments being canceled and all of these mm -hmm. things happening and that's hard for him. So, you know, one of the things that we talked about is that, okay, well, if you can't go out and play baseball, I mean, he's doing a little bit of throwing in the backyard, but yeah. if you can't do that, why don't we study baseball? So I gave him some activities that he could do. Like he was like, mom has a project for me. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, you know, but the projects that he's loving, right? So he loves mm -hmm. baseball. And I said, why don't you then map out your process and what you need to do in the future to become a baseball player? So if you're going into high school, what are the steps? Where do you need to go? How do you need? Well, he loves it. So that doesn't feel like work for him, yes. right? And so if we think about this for kids and help our kids understand that they can steer their own mindset when they're feeling frustrated, once they've had a chance to kind of like accept and feel what they are, then we can ask them questions to be like, you know, we're not, we're not helpless. We can model that behavior, but we can also say to them, like, you know, what brings you joy? What do you love to do? What makes mm -hmm. you feel peaceful, for example? Or what are you really good at? If we ask them those questions and say, okay, let's get creative now. How can you do more of that at home right now? And mm -hmm. so whether it's like, if you love arts and crafts and you want to do more of that, if you love video games, okay, then what can you do around that? And can you build a video game? Can you study it? Can you look at what's more popular and why like mm. if we as parents partner with our kids and get creative the opportunity here is for kids to get to know themselves right you know in our entrepreneurial circles one of the common questions i find in networking uh meetings is what's your superpower yes and and do we ask our kids that no you're right we should yeah. right we should ask our kids that what is your superpower what do you love to do what are you really good at that when you start to work it doesn't feel like work Okay, yes. let's do more of that. And so when they get to know themselves, they will build confidence in themselves. So I keep thinking that, you know, um, and I'm, I'm included as a parent too. I'm like, oh my God, like math skills from way back in the day. And yep. I'm like, they're in grade school and I can't get this, you know, <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> right? uh, and so, yes, those, we have responsibilities and we have to teach them those things. But to me, the biggest thing is that we can't stress about it mm -hmm. because if we can't do something to make the situation more positive for our kids, stressing about our performance to get our kids better only adds more stress to them and it shows them the fear with those uncomfortable feelings so let's let let's do our best in teaching them all of those critical skills and then where we might feel like we're falling short this is the chance for us to say okay let's give them all the other learnings that they may not get from a classroom you know this is the chance for us to re like really learn from 
actual real life. Yes. <laughs> the real yes. life has become our classroom now, right? Yeah. And yeah, you are the guide for that. The art of lifing. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. So thank you, Keika, for your time today. Um, one of the things that I know that you're putting together for us one of the things that I know you're putting together for us is an incredible cheat sheet so that parents have a free resource so that they can support their kids during this time. And I think I definitely will pull some of those questions because I think one of the things I do with my kids is a gratitude journal every night. And we do some journaling like affirmations. What did you love about today? What was challenging about your day? But I think that what you said about those kind of prompts, asking your kids, asking your kids is exactly that, right, is yes. a great way to engage with them in a way that's not math or science related. Um, yes. And I think that those are really powerful. But before I let you go, and I will include all those details in the show notes, I would love for you to share with us a little excerpt, and I will post it in the show notes if people want to watch the full TED Talk. But I did speak with Rhea Sokol a couple of weeks ago. She's the one that has that viral video about thank you coronavirus. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's beautiful. And we spoke about gratitude. Yes. And actually, several people on the podcast through this COVID conversation have been speaking about gratitude. But I would love for you to share why you think we're doing gratitude all wrong. Oh, I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because, you know, feeling gratitude is incredibly important. And there is a global movement out there where people recognize the value of that. And there's been so many studies done around how it's important to feel gratitude. But I feel like we're missing a critical step. Okay. And that is that when we're feeling gratitude, it is so important for us and so powerful for us, powerful for us as a collective society to gift that gratitude forward, to give it to other people. So, you know, so often in our lives, we're grateful for people and we say, you know, when you said this to me, it just really made my day. Thank you so much for that. We're thinking it in our head. We're journaling it. We're writing it. We're like, you know, but that person might have zero idea that they had an impact uh... on you. And so what I, what I advocate for is that when you feel gratitude for somebody, take that moment, take that time, go back to them if you need to and share that gratitude. Because if you do that, when you see their reaction mm. in terms of, it, it's like, it's the most beautiful side effect of gifting gratitude, but it like immediately gets you, gives you a shot of happiness. Right. And the biggest thing is that, you know, we all want to know that uh, we're seen, we're heard, and we matter. Mm -hmm. And when you pay gratitude forward to somebody and you say, I'm so thankful that you had this impact on me, you have left a positive imprint on me that I will always remember. You are validating them to their core saying, yeah. I see you, I hear you, and I matter. Wow. And to bring it back to this time of global pandemic, yeah. connecting with people like this uh, through conversations, through a phone call, is that beautiful opportunity, right? Because oftentimes we're like so busy and we're like, oh, if I call my friend, it's not going to be a five minute, you know, let me share what I'm grateful for. It's going to be an hour and I don't have an hour, right? right. Yeah. Now with time being this beautiful commodity that we now have, yes. to actually practice that is a really yeah. perfect opportunity in fact, right? Yes. So for all of you with that are- parents, yeah. if you do that with your kids, mm. it can be even powerful. So when kids are drawing artwork, for example, take a picture of it and send it to grandparents or other family. Wow. Video chat with them to see how happy they've made them. You know, kids can witness that too. This, there's no age limit to practicing gratitude and paying that forward. So do it with your kids too. Oh, I love that. Okay, good. That is a challenge for everybody listening, everybody watching. Get out there, connect with others, share your gratitude. I appreciate you, Keika. I love your wisdom and your insight of how we can navigate this uncertain time in a really beautiful way. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. That was so much fun. Yes.